This is an interesting project I'd like to show. This is through some of the poorest areas in Bogota. We made a 23-kilometer pedestrian street. Very high quality, even underground cables and the like. In some areas, there was no city yet. And then this was land bought by government for housing projects. The, the artery for the development was the pedestrian street. Complete. This is an interesting project, see? Underground cables, pedestrian space, bicycle way, and the cars in the mud. <laughs> it's uh, different values, I mean. The new city begins to grow around the pedestrian street, more than around a, a car street. See, normally, this is the typical illegal development in the process of advancing and legalizing. Normally, the car pavement would have been done first. This we did first. First for pedestrian and bicycles, after for pavements for the cars. Different values are created. Respect for humans. Children going to school, the bicycle shops open next to it. Uh, see the lady, see again, the car in the mud, the pedestrian street next to it. Children going to all. This is a different concept. I think we should have a network of hundreds of kilometers of pedestrian streets. How wide should sidewalks be? As wide as you can make them. Then in a, in a thing, we made infrastructure for pedestrians next to poor, poor neighborhoods in, for, to enjoy them, the waterfront. To go out to the countryside in pedestrian street uh, next to canals, all next to drainage canals should be pedestrian spaces. What you can do with a drainage canal and not some pedestrian infrastructure. A protected bicycle way is not cute architectural feature in a city. It is a right, unless one thinks that only motor vehicle owners have a right to safe mobility. Even the poorest have a bicycle. A protected bicycle way is a symbol that shows that a citizen on a $30 bicycle is as important as one on a $30,000 car. So now, from almost 0%, in seven years, Bogota now has 5% of its population using bicycles every day. They are saving one and a half monthly minimum wage every year. In fancy bridges for bicycles. Large roads are necessary, but they must have quality pedestrian infrastructure next to them, next to poor neighborhoods. We are going to build them, but make nice pedestrian spaces next to these neighborhoods. It's pu I, public pedestrian space is uh, not a luxury. It's as necessary as, as hospitals or roads. In the future, low-income citizens will have access to most goods high-income citizens have today, computers or mobile phones. Access to green spaces will be a crucial source of inequality, or equality, if we really create parks, such as central parks and things like this. Parks and plazas are as necessary, again, as roads or hospitals. This we demolish downtown with a huge social program, 23 hectares to create a park in the middle of some downtown area. The, again, space for children, space for cars, the same picture. Uh, Parks in the poor neighborhoods, parks are important, again, even in the poorest neighborhoods. Artificial turf, soccer fields, large parks in the middle of the poorest areas. And we buy even land for the future, even if we don't have money to make the park yet. And now, to finish... The idea, again, is not just to solve this slum problem, but to avoid them. So I think we have to buy land in advance next to it. So national government gives $4,500 subsidy for $1,500 houses. We created an agency which buys land next to the city, either voluntarily or through eminent domain, at rural prices. And the, but the is private developers who build the houses, but they have only two years to develop this, to build the houses, and their maximum price of $15,000. This is the type of developments with lots of parks, well-designed. This is the, the type of slums that were there before, and this is the new type of development with a lot of infrastructure, pedestrian. This is the type of houses, 40 square meter houses for $15,000, and they can add up another 20 meter 
and we get very high densities, about 340 inhabitants per hectare, sidewalks, some of them are uh, with uh, higher densities like this. And this is the land, yes, uh, this is the land next to Bogota. And as uh, rural land, right there, you see the city, right there. This land should not be privately owned. Although it's outside the urban area, it is, this land is adjacent to it. With good public transport, this land is only 25 minutes from downtown. This land around developing country cities and even land which is very rural in Mumbai today should be publicly owned. I know, for example, of some Latin American investors which have a lot of land around Indian cities. I think it's very absurd that this is becoming a speculating feature because this is the main obstacle to solving the needs for housing with good quality public spaces and good planning. So I really would suggest very respectfully that the Indian state at any level which is relevant should acquire all or most of the land, the rural land around the cities because it's very likely that the cities will grow much farther than what you imagine today. With good public transport, all of this land can be accessible anywhere in the city. Thank you. Thank you very much, Enrique. You always inspire us and challenge us, and we look forward to more conversations.